Shivaji is dead. Slowly, respectfully, the men of the village carry his body to the riverbank. The firewood is ready. All has been prepared according to tradition and customs of the village. The body is placed on the funeral pyre and the old man's son puts the flame that will carry the soul away. Now the mantle has fallen to the sun. Now he, Vital, is the family herald. The burden lies heavy on the shoulders of a young man. What will he do with the new day and the problems it brings? The sun is up and it... As he winds his turban, symbol of his new status and position, he looks out over the land of his village. The crops are scanty this year. Too much early rain, too little late rain. Food will be scarce and he is responsible for many people now. His mother is one of them. Now she depends on him. Reassuringly, he tells her that he will always take care of her and of his ancient grandmother. But the day's work is waiting. There is no time for talk. The people set out for the fields with their bullocks and their tools, and Vital leads the way. Like most farmers in the area, Vital has planted a kind of millet called jowar, the staple food here in western India. The crop looks poor. Vital has no illusions about the income it will bring. Still, it must be sold, whatever the price. There are debts. The moneylender is shouting threats. Vital loads his grain onto the bullock cart and starts for the market in Ahmednagar, 15 miles away. The bullock cart still reflects the pace and rhythm of life in rural India. But as Vital nears the city, the tempo speeds up and the traffic thickens. At the noisy market, business is already in full swing. People have traveled for miles with their goats and their cows, their hens, bananas, vegetables and grain. Competition is keen. It's a buyer's market and the prices are low.
Many times in the past, Vital has come here to the grain market, but always with his father, a shrewd and respected bargainer. This time, he's alone, and he's worried. As the merchant's assistant punctures the sacks and pulls out samples of grain, Vital already knows the verdict. His grain won't bring much. As the assistant punctures the sacks and pulls out samples of grain, Vital already knows the verdict. His grain won't bring much. Look, says the merchant, this is poor Jawar. Just compare it with this hybrid that a lot of the farmers are growing these days. You ought to plant this new kind. Let me give you some advice, he goes on. There's a place here in Nagar where small farmers like you can get help. You ought to go and talk with the people there. The place where the grain merchant has directed Vital is Ahmed Nagar College, a Christian institution established to train and serve the people of rural India. The chapel is a center of college life. These students, men and women, are studying not only a traditional curriculum of arts and sciences, but also rural sociology and community development. It is a strange new world that Vital enters as he drives his bullocks through the gates of the college's center for studies in rural development. The chapel is a center of college life. These students, men and women, are studying not only a traditional curriculum of arts and sciences, but also rural sociology and community development. It is a strange new world that Vital enters as he drives his bullocks through the gates of the college's center for studies in rural development. Hesitantly, he looks about, wondering where to go. He is lucky. Here comes someone he knows. Kale, a farmer from the nearby village of Pargaon. Obviously, Kale knows his way around. We all come here because we have problems like yours, Kale tells Vital. But my village has become a different place because of what we've learned here. The center has helped us do things we never thought we could do. Come with me, Kale continues. I'll take you to see Dr. Hulbe. He's the head of this program. Dr. S. K. Hulbe, known as Mickey, is an agricultural economist, professor, founder and director of the center. He firmly believes that a college must be part of the real world and that if education doesn't deal with the people's needs, it's not only irrelevant, it's sinful. Mickey inspires people to dream dreams and he has a great gift for showing them how to help themselves. As the men talk, Professor Hulbe listens intently. He knows that when the initiative comes from the villagers themselves, there's a good chance of success in the project. Show me exactly where your village is, he says. I think the center is already working near there. The map shows all the dozens of villages within a radius of 20 miles of Ahmed Nagar. The map shows all the dozens of villages within a radius of 20 miles of Ahmed Nagar. And the center is involved in community development programs in many of them. Wells, lift irrigation, afforestation, crop improvement. It is important for Vital to understand all the many facets of the center's program. 
Miki suggests that Kale take him on a motorcycle tour to see what is happening in some of the villages where the center is at work. The people of this village are on their way to the fields to harvest the ripe jawar. This is the scene that greets Kale and Vital as they arrive on the cycle from Ahmednagar. It's a beautiful crop, worth singing about. The grain in the field is hybrid jawar. That is what the merchant had showed Vital, what the center helps the people to grow. Vital can't help comparing it in his mind with the meager crop he and his neighbors have grown this year. The next stop is an open country near a reservoir recently built by the government to catch the runoff from the hills. With engineering help from the center, the people are digging an irrigation trench to get the water up to the dry fields that ring the reservoir. When the pipes arrive and are laid, water will be pumped through them to the fields. Now Kale takes Vital to see the construction of a new well in his village. We used to have a water problem, says Kale, but we have two wells for irrigation now, and this will be our third. In digging the new well, men and women work side by side, using simple tools to dig and carry. It's a slow process, but it provides work for many, and the finished well will be good. A basic conviction of Dr. Hulbe and his staff is that all must benefit from improvements in the village, especially those who are the worst off. Hence this well, built for the untouchables, the traditional outcasts of society. With no water, they have until now watched their land crack and their crops wither and die. Now they too have a good well, and that means harvest, food, life itself. This is Raman Rao, a prosperous farmer who donated the land for the third and biggest well. Visiting professors from colleges near Ahmednagar have come to the center for a short course in village development. Raman Rao shows them what is possible when there is a good water supply like this. As Kale and Vital arrive, Raman Rao proudly shows off the well, the heart of the village lift irrigation system. It is 55 feet in diameter with a big 50 horsepower submersible pump. Miraculously, when digging began, 
the people struck water at eight feet. Raman Rao is justifiably proud also of the coconut seedlings the village has planted. Until now, coconuts have never been possible in this dry place. His sugar cane field will soon yield a fine cash crop, a boost to the village economy. Five hundred acres are already being watered from this well, and the water travels far. Here, almost at the edge of the village, is a relay station in the lift irrigation system, and beyond it, the water gushes into the fields, making possible this second planting of jawar. A cow makes the most of the plentiful water. Even the buffaloes appreciate the idea of irrigation and they thoroughly enjoy their daily soak. Irrigation makes possible another project, a new one which, if it succeeds, may totally change the face of these barren hills. Once the hills were covered with trees like this one. With irrigation, there may someday be forests again. Village girls collect water from the tank at the end of the irrigation line and they pour it carefully into clay pots at the foot of each tree. From the pots it percolates slowly into the soil, providing steady, continuous moisture. This afforestation project, still in its infancy, will help stop erosion, the disastrous washing away of topsoil during the monsoon rains. But, Vital asks, are the trees useful in other ways? Yes, Kale replies. Certain quick-drawing ones will provide light lumber for construction, and the leaves of this one can be used for cattle fodder. Near the base of the hill, young fruit trees have been planted. With a ready supply of water, they will grow quickly and provide an important addition to the people's diet. Here is a field of yellow-flowered dal, an important source of protein in the diet of the rural Indian. Tobacco can't qualify as a useful food, but this flourishing field promises a valuable cash crop. Like Raman Rao's sugar cane, it will give a good lift to the village economy. Thanks to lift irrigation, diversified farming is now possible for the first time in the village's history. Various grains, fruit, tobacco, dal. A farmer plows his field for a second crop, wheat this time. As the farmer prospers, the village prospers. These men make bullock cart wheels but they could not afford to buy equipment until the center helped them secure a bank loan. Now the business is thriving because the people of Pargao have enough money to keep their bullock carts in good repair. It's the same with the village potter. He knew where to find the best clay, but he had no way to bring it here. The center helped him also to get a bank loan so that he could buy donkeys to carry the clay. Now this skillful craftsman has a fine business.
These girls are future tailors. With the help of a staff member from the center, they are learning to use sewing machines. When they have completed the tailoring classes, they will have a lucrative skill that is useful here in Pargaon or wherever they live after marriage. These projects mean a new opportunity for women to learn. Young and old, they come together for literacy classes and lessons in nutrition and health. These buffaloes are the nucleus of a village dairy run by the women. The center helped the people get bank loans to buy the animals. What is left after family use, the men sell for a good price at the government milk collection center nearby. The milk test shows that the butterfat content is high. In the center of the village, a community storehouse is being built to hold the increased harvest. It's always hard in rural India to keep grain safe from insects and rats. Therefore, the headman explains, they're building a storehouse that will be secure. They will keep their grain there until the supply in the area is scarce. The price goes up and they can sell at a decent profit. Behind the storehouse is the village threshing machine, hard at work. It replaces the bullocks trampling out the grain on the threshing floor. It means less work, less time, less waste of the precious grain. It's a fine harvest in Pargao this year, as the growing pile of grain sacks testifies. Back in his own village, all these things are in Vital's mind as he looks at the last stalks of grain still standing in his field. What a contrast to what he has seen. He knows now that change and improvement are possible. He calls the elders together and they listen carefully as he describes the work of the Center for Studies in Rural Development at Abednagar College. Two of the men have been to Pargao and seen for themselves. The men are convinced. They decide to ask Dr. Holbe and the center staff for help. Once again, Vital goes to Ahmed Nagar, this time to make a formal request for assistance from the center. When Dr. Holbe receives this request from the new village, he confers with Dr. Tom Barnabas, principal of Ahmed Nagar College and a major architect of the rural development program. And uh, they seem to be having a lot of problems and uh, there's a lot of potential over there. And so um, uh, we are thinking that uh, it might Dr. be Dr. Barnabas gives approval. They will go to Vital's village. In early morning, a few days later, faculty and students arrive in the village. Soon, Dr. Hulbe and his team are walking through the village, talking with the people and making notes on what they see and hear. A new project must start with fact-finding, careful study, and long hours when villagers, faculty, and students listen to each other. 
One group of students begins a house-to-house -house survey to discover social and economic conditions in the village. Old people, children, health and illness, literacy, skills, occupations, leadership. The students are learning not only facts, but thought patterns, prejudices, needs and concerns. Another group collects samples of soil from the fields and will have its properties analyzed. What crops will grow best in each kind of soil? What land must be fertilized before it is planted at all? One of the students is a pastor from Nigeria who will take back to his own country the skills he is learning here. A third group draws up a map of the village to show geographic features and land holdings. With their professor and in consultation with a water engineer, they're developing a total village plan for irrigation and land use. The new plan calls for the digging of a community well as the essential first step in a lift irrigation system. The location is pinpointed. Now the elders meet to consider the proposals. There is a new expectancy among them, and there is security also, for experienced advisors will share the risks with them in this revolutionary venture. They vote to go forward. It is time to begin. From the village, Vita leads a group to the spot where digging will start. The earth is as hard and resistant as the old habits of the village. But the earth can be broken and the village can change. Each blow of the pick bears the promise of green fields. The village will live. 